Hello astrotometry. I want to introduce some ideas about the nature of the hypertime shadow and my speculation about them. And before I get started on this, I want to say for anyone that's interested in this, I recommend highly that you verify the observation that I'm referring to about the object uh, known as the sun grazing comet leaving a shadow, a hypertime shadow on the sun in the form of an active region and or a sunspot coincident with a coronal mass ejection when it collides with the sun. I recommend that you verify that observation. Even if, even if you're not a scientist, if you're a scientist, I, I highly recommend that you verify this observation. And what I'm doing with astrotometry is providing a framework for us to understand this coincidence, this coincident uh, supersymmetrical uh, manifestation of matter uh, through, the, through the physical space that we observe as the cosmos. So in other words, um, what I'm trying to do is understand a phenomenon that has been hitherto uh, not explained, not explainable by our modern physics. So if you look at uh, the, si the situation, the history of, of this type of discovery, um, it was known that the planet Venus uh, changed its brightness throughout time. A long time before, um, the uh, Copernican model was used to uh, better understand what was really going on. In other words, uh, this observation, um, the connection between these two things has been a puzzle, has been a mystery um, until, uh, until now. And so I'm trying to uh, provide uh, an alternative paradigm to understand a very, very interesting, very, very curious phenomenon. This is one of the things on which astrotometry is based. I did not create astrotometry just because I was uh, upset with astronomy. <laughs> that's, that's not right. This is a completely different way of looking at the universe that is not three-dimensional. Three the, the, the shift from astrotometry uh, from astronomy is a hyperdimensional shift. In other words, we're going from uh, a concept where the, the world is strictly three-dimensional to a concept where the world is uh, super symmetrical, uh, hyperdimensional, and that there is, a, there is a symmetry that manifests from the mechanisms of uh, the, the, the mechanisms that move matter and energy through time. In other words, the astrotometry uh, pr provides a, uh, an integration of the concept of photon spin entanglement and the supersymmetry that is seen on the subatomic level uh, with our understanding of what is in the cosmos. And so we're getting to see something here. We're getting to understand something here. And this is a, this is a completely, this is a revolutionary um, understanding and and so put that put it in that context but if if you want to if you want to discuss it if you want to argue I really really recommend that you make the observations that you you do the you, you do what I'm saying about looking at the correlation between the incoming sun grazing comet it's uh, it, the mark that it leaves on the Sun and it's in the case that it eventually collides with the sun, the coronal mass ejection that has been uh, caught. And you can do this with the SOHO, uh, the SOHO archive. You can look through the SOHO archive to find this information. There's also several websites. Um, I'll link some resources in the comments. Um, and I want to I want to say this not would this discovery would not have been possible if it was not for the SOHO project. If it wasn't for uh, if it wasn't for that, this discovery would not have been possible. And so I would like to sincerely thank anyone, uh, anyone who's watching this that, is, that has been a part of the SOHO project or the similar projects at NASA or the ESA. Um, thank you very much. And 
um, I hope that I hope that you can benefit from this. And um, that this is this is this is huge. This is absolutely huge. Now, as far as the details, as far as the physics goes, I'm going to go ahead and speculate um, and do some speculation on the um, the relationship between the the object and and the the shadow that it leaves on the sun. In order to understand what I'm going to say, it's necessary to think about what matter is and what energy is in a more comprehensive way. One of the concepts, one of the pr primary concepts in astrotometry is that matter does not persist independent of everything else around it. In other words, the, the underlying pattern in the uh, whatever matter energy substrate may or may not exist does not persist in time independently of all of the other matter and energy uh, patterns that surround it. And so, in other words, there's a, a, a phase-locked relationship between the presence of what we understand to be the Earth sphere and what is outside of the Earth sphere. And so, this is the concept of the of the uh, the chronocentric or the uh, chronodifferentiated movement. In other words, there's movement that happens that we perceive on one level that we uh, identify as as objects moving relative to one another. And there's another type of movement that happens on the subatomic level that is the propagation of sorts of this matter on, on another level, on a different level. 